Hi, so in the previous section we talked about how to edit, delete, and create uh, items in our store. In this section, we're going to talk about a major issue that we have to work with, and that is that we have no validation for our items that the user is going to enter. So any user can enter a uh, any value for any uh, for any uh, item field, and it will still go in our, into our edit database, and that's extremely unsafe. So in order to fix that, we have to add some validation rules. An ASB MVC will take care of enforcing them and showing the appropriate message for the user. So let's start with adding a using statement here. Three using statements. So system dot data annotation. Actually, it's a component model. Dot, this one is here. And using. And let's go ahead and enter some validation rules here. So the first validation rule is called bind. And bind uh, lists fields to exclude or include when binding parameters or form values to model properties. So here we are going to bind exclude. So let's just write bind. No, bind. And to pay here, exclude. That's it. And for item ID, we don't want to show this for our... So we're going to have a property called the scaffold column uh, and we're going to set it to false and it allows us to hide fields from editor form so just type in here scaffold column and set, set it to be false and for our category ID here we want it to display a name for it to be category instead of category ID so here just type in uh, display display name to be a uh, category and for producer ID also to be the same to be display a, a name to be producer so display name and for the title here we're going to use required and it uh, indicates that the property is required is a required field and we're going to show a message if the user didn't uh, add this uh, field. So let's go ahead and add it. Required to be here to display error message. To be an item title is required. Yep. And also, we are going to use a string length, and basically, um, makes the user gives it gives a maximum length for a string field. So let's add this here to be string length, string. And for the uh, price here, we also want to have a required. So let's just copy here, paste it, and to be. We actually want a user to have a maximum and minimum uh, price also. So after we add a required, we are going to add a range for the price. So for the required here, we have to add price is required. And for the range, range is basically like string length. Also add a range for the user, but it's a numeric field. And for here, for item URL we're going to have a display value and for item URL here we are going to have to put a display name to be let's add virtual here also so what virtual does here it allows NT framework to lazy load those two so what is lazy load uh, it basically um, uh, defer the initialization of any uh, field, uh, field until it's absolutely necessary and this is um, more efficient uh, if it's used properly and we are going to talk more about uh, the virtual or an empty framework um, lazy load and eager load in another tutorial but for now just let's build and see how everything works and let's go ahead and browse to store oh my god so, yeah, all right. 
So now let's go ahead and drop our database because we have made some changes to our uh, database here, validation rules. So let's put here three and build. And let's run it. And let's browse to store. So as you can see here, there is no any, there's nothing in our category. So let's add just some data. So go server explorer and show so entities. Let's see tables. So let's browse to store manager, store manager, and if, and if we go here into details, we can back to list, we, we create a new here, and for price if we like enter like zero, so here price must be between 0 0.1 and 100, and if we like then enter anything else, we, we have an item title is required for the title here. Uh, and if we enter like so, something like uh, like an, a number here, we saw the field price must be a number. As you can see, it's already fulfilled our uh, validation rules. So if we here enter something reasonable, so let's see, um, let's see like uh, a new lamp, and price to be three, item like whatever, create. And it's created our uh, new lamp here. So now anyone can can enter to store manager and edit, delete, uh, or show details of our store. And that's not good. So we want uh, some specific people to be able to enter the store manager controller. But just to make it easier for us to uh, to navigate here, I'm going to add a store and store manager uh, for to our website. So go ahead and to our shared. Now it's, I should have done this like before, but I just wanted you to get used to the uh, typing of the, the URLs. Let's just copy here. And for here, let's make it store. So here, this specific, this specifies the store controller, get into the index method, and show the link to be named store. So let's make another one for action for a store manager. So let's copy here. So let's go ahead and build and run this. Yeah, so edit store manager to be able to navigate easily. So now let's go ahead and add the uh, authorization for our store manager here. So let's make the here. Let's put a validation to be authorized. Uh, rules uh, users to be like uh, Ali, for example, at Gmail. So, um, so let's build this. So only this user can can go can get into the uh, website uh, for uh, editing, deleting, or creating new. Nothing, so let's register a new user here. So for the email, make it uh, Ali at gmail.com. Um, password to be like is the FGH1. And you should, of course, make a, a powerful password. So just choose whatever the name of the, of the email. So register here. Password must have at least one character. All right, so let's capital A. And is the FG H1 so register here? So let's save this for Ali and hello Ali at Gmail. So let's go into store manager. So, as you can see here, we were able to enter the store manager uh, controller so we can edit, delete, or uh, share details of uh, our items. But if we logged off and register a new user, let's say Ahmed at uh, Gmail. Com. And if we try to enter, or I say, and if we try to enter store manager, it allowed it showed us here we have to log in. So we can't enter the store manager until unless we are the user Ali also, only. We can also add other users here, just his uh, email here to be Ahmed at gmail.com and just build this one. And if we browse into store manager, 
Ahmed can also edit, delete, or create new items, as you can see here. So that's it for this section. We were able to add validation rules for the user to enter specific values for uh, the fields in the uh, creation or edit um, fields. Uh, and we were able to add authorization for a specific users to enter the store manager controller. And I hope you guys enjoyed and see you in the next section.